and girls, it's Sunday again and it's the 1st of November. We're in seven months now, we've been doing Sunday School online since March, since lockdown. And we've, we've just kept it going and, and we're going to keep it going for a little while yet. So we're going to sing a few songs and then we're in First Samuel today. A really, really exciting story. Sing along with me, a couple of lovely songs. Foundations have been Still God. Let's sing a couple more 10,000 reasons. Do you remember this one here? Lovely song.
nations to worship your holy name. Let's sing another one. Lovely, good worship song. songs to be singing on Sunday morning. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you for Sunday school again. And Lord, we just pray that you'll give help as we bring the story to the boys and girls and for Samuel. And as we love to sing and continue learning more Bible verses in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Here's something, boys and girls, just to let you know what we're, what we're going to be doing so every Sunday. Sunday school at 10.30. School assemblies are back to school tomorrow. Every morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 9 a.m. And make sure you tell your teachers on YouTube, Hope for Youth Ministries on YouTube, every morning at 9 o'clock or any time after that. And on Friday night, over a special Friday night Bible club, every week at 7 o'clock. So 10.30 Sunday school. 7 o'clock Friday night and then every morning during school time at 9 o'clock. Let's uh, continue with our Gospel Alphabet. It's important we try to encourage children, families to read the Word of God. God's Word doesn't change and it's one of those books that comes and stays. Many books come and they go. They go out of date. They're irrelevant. But God's Word is always up to date. It's always relevant and it's good that every generation gets to hear about the Bible, gets to read it, gets to learn it and to know it for themselves. Hence the reason why we do Sunday school, do assemblies, and do our Friday night club. Let's sing the song. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Now today we're going to be on I. This is the ninth week of Sunday school. Ready? A. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. B. 
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, saying, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Deem, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Aim. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. F. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Jane, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then it's him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. I, that's today's verse, I, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, I am the way, the way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the truth. He doesn't tell lies. To tell lies is sin. Jesus can sin. He doesn't even know how to sin. He's perfect. He says, I am the truth. When he says, I am the way to God, I am the way to heaven, he says, I'm telling the truth. There's no other way. I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. What sort of life is he talking about? Everlasting life. Life forever with God in heaven. That's the sort of life he's talking about. The Christian life. The narrow way that leads to God, that leads to everlasting life. No one. No one, nobody comes to the Father but or except through me, that's Jesus. I, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 14, verse 6. So every Sunday, every week, every Sunday, we're learning a Bible verse. There's 26 in total and it's called the Gospel Alphabet. All right, try and learn these if you possibly can. Let's sing the song all through history because we're going through history. The history of the Bible, right through the Bible. Know that the most enormous flood became the birds and animals of flood. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and no one lived his life for him. Moses led his people through the sea, taking them away from slavery.
We're going to sing a final song at the end, but let's go to our story now. It's so important. It's called, we're going to go through the, we're going to through the books of the Bible, and today we've come to the, the first Samuel, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First Samuel. And next week, all and well, we'll be looking at Second Samuel, and so on, right, till we get through the books of the Bible. So today, there's four main characters. I love character studies. Four main characters in their story today. There's Hannah, there's Samuel, there's Saul, and there is David. Now, there's also three little boys, because Saul was once a boy, David was a boy, and Samuel. And when they were young boys, that's when they put their trust in God, they loved God, and they sought to do right before God. But some of them didn't turn out the way maybe God wanted them to. Let's learn a little bit about this. So we're in the Bible, and we've come across a book called the First Book of Samuel. Samuel, at the, at the very beginning, chapter 1, verse 1, it reads about the birth of Samuel, this little boy. Now what happened? Hannah was one of those girls who grew up, fell in love, got married, but naturally she wanted a son. She wanted a child, but she was barren, which means she could not have children. There was other such people like Rebecca, like Rachel, like Elizabeth, and for many, many years they were barren, and they would often pray and wait to God for children, because God promised them they would have children, and they were unable to bear children. And quite often, it's this is a lesson, because Hannah really wanted a son, and the whole focus was on her, Lord, give me, give me a son. But it wasn't until she realized, is this something God really wants? And sometimes whenever we pray, it's important when we pray that we want to please God. And God was pleased to hear Hannah's prayer and answer it. And even before she was able to have a child, the other girls around her would continue to laugh and make fun of her because she could not have children and in life people's going to mock you they're going to make fun of you the way you look the way you are and it, ha- it won't change it's always been like this because of sin coming into the world but Hannah was a strong believer in God and she kept praying believing that God would answer her prayer so she continued to pray before the Lord you can read this many times in the Bible people love to pray and they would even pray until they would weep was their earnestness and their petition, their cry out to God for help that God would hear them. And after whenever everyone was eating, when people were feasting, they were celebrating, having fun with their family, Hannah would go up by herself and use that extra time to pray unto God. And she really prayed. Even Eli, the old priest, when he saw her praying, he thought she was drunk and he began to scold her. He said, I'm not drunk, I don't even drink, I'm just asked praying to God. And she told him she was praying for a son. And he said he would pray for her as well. And boys and girls, God answered her prayer. Within her son, within a year, she had a wee son. And the wee boy was called Samuel, which means ask of God. And Hannah really loved her wee boy Samuel. And before Hannah had a baby, she prayed, Lord, if you give me a son, I promise I will give him back to you. You can read this. How many mothers would pray that, Lord, give me a child, and if you do, I'll physically, literally, honestly, give him back to you to serve you. And she did. When the wee boy was weaned, maybe four, five, six years old, she took him back and he was adopted into the family of Eli to work in the temple, to be with Eli and his two sons and Eli's family. And once a year, she would come and make him a new coat and give it to wee Samuel. And wee Samuel loved where he was. And he worked hard. But something the Bible says about wee Samuel, even though Samuel was a young boy, he loved God. He loved learning about God. And Eli had two sons. But these two sons, they were priests as well, but they were not good sons. They were wicked. They were evil. They were sinful. Whenever people would come to to pray to God, they would steal their money. They would abuse them and make fun of them and mock them. And God kept warning Eli, Eli, your sons are wicked. But he wouldn't listen. And God would use different people to warn Eli, to instruct his sons, to teach him, but they didn't. And they should never have been in the temple serving God. They should be outside and away. But Eli kept them in. See, even though Samuel was a wee boy, he loved God. 
It says Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And boys and girls, whenever we're young and learning about God, some people they learn about God wonderful, but maybe you don't actually know the Lord. It's one thing to know to know God, but it's another to know about God, but it's another thing entirely different to know God, to be an actual Christian, to ask God to, to open your heart and take away your sin and ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you and to save you. So I know if it's important to learn the word of God, because the Bible talks about the law, the word of God is like a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Because whenever you get saved, then all of this can be revealed unto you. And here's me, Samuel, and he's sleeping in his bed, and he hears a voice three times. Samuel, Samuel. And he jumps up and he runs over to Eli. But Eli said, Samuel, it's not me. I didn't call you. And Eli, the fourth time, Eli realized it was God. And whenever a little Samuel was sleeping and he hears the voice again, he opens his eyes and he sits up on his bed and he says, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Sometimes we just talk, talk, talk. But sometimes God says, Listen, I need to tell you something. I need to teach you something. And little Samuel says, Speak, Lord, for your servant's listening. And that night God told Samuel, I want you to give a message to Eli. Tell him that both his sons are going to die because of their wickedness, because of their sinfulness. And on the same day that they die, there will no longer be an old man in this house. Boys and girls, Eli's sons, they, they, were, they were warriors too, but they weren't good men. And the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of God, where people could worship, it was stolen by the Philistines. And both the sons went into the battlefield to try and fight the captured. But you know what happened? Whenever it was taken, the Bible says, whenever they were in the battlefield, both of them died. And the Philistines got the victory. And the news was brought by a soldier to Eli. Eli, both your sons have died in the battle. Eli was over 90 years old. He was a heavy man. And as he sat in his chair, he was so shocked. The Bible says he fell off the back of it and he broke his neck and he died. That was the end of Eli. Samuel. Then the Bible says Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. And that did not let none of his words fall to the ground. What a lovely thing to be said. When Samuel grew, he was so full of the Lord. He was now a believer and God was training him up and Samuel was going to be the, the new prophet, a man of God to lead the people. And everyone loved him and respected him. And many years passed and Samuel would journey all over the land of Israel. The Bible says, those who honour me, I will honour Boys and girls, it's so important to put God first in your life and always respect and reverence and honour God. And if you do that, the Lord then will honour you. And off Samuel went over the mountains from village to village, town to town, teaching the people, instructing the people, praying for the people about God and teaching them the ways of God. Samuel was married, he had two sons, but quite often he would leave them as he would travel from place to place and teach the people, he would gather them together. Thus saith the Lord, and he would teach the people the ways of God, all about what God was teaching them. The nation of Israel, it was either for God or rebelled against God. And so quickly, it would fall away from God. That's why God needed a prophet, someone to teach them to come back to God. Or God will punish them. Yes. And Samuel would tell the people, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. So Samuel was teaching the people the good and the right way to follow the Lord. And said, if I don't pray for you to sin, what a responsibility we have to pray for people, our family, our neighbours, our friends. Yes, if you know the Lord and especially if you're a Christian, pray for people. It's so, so important. Now, the Bible also talks about prayer, how the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man and it availeth much. But Samuel, Samuel wanted his two sons. He wanted them to come into to be prophets, to be priests. But they were wicked. They weren't very nice people. 
It says in the Bible, in 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 3, his sons did not walk in Samuel's ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. They weren't honest. They were liars and people would pay them money to say things, to do things, and they took the bribes. They were dishonest. And they should have said, no, we don't do that. But then they said, you are old, Samuel. Your sons, they don't follow you. They don't work the way. We want them to be like you, but they're not. Therefore, we don't want a prophet. We don't want a priest. We want a king, a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. See, the people were rebelling against Samuel now. Samuel, we don't want your sons. Remember all the years ago, Samuel was sent to Eli. Eli, your sons are wicked. Teach them to stop. And Eli never hated. And little Samuel realized the same mistake that he told Eli about. Eli about. He was doing the same thing. I want a responsibility for the man of God to raise his children in the good and right and proper way if he wanted to, to do what he'd done for God. And while he was so busy helping others, his sons were not nice people to be around at all. And the people said, we don't want your sons. We want a king instead. And again, God said, Samuel, I want you to go and find another young man. This young man is called Saul. Saul was a very handsome man. He was head and shoulders above everyone else. And he was a very clever man, a very wise man, a man who also loved God. And he was out looking after his friends, his neighbor's donkeys. They were lost. So Saul was a worker. He wasn't lazy. He was willing to help people. He cared for people. And he was able to do a menial task and go and find donkeys. And Samuel went over and said, Saul, you're the man God has chosen to be the first king of Israel. You're going to be a king with great plans for God. Saul, he felt very humbled. He felt unworthy. Why is God choosing me? There's so many other better people. But Samuel said, Saul, you're the man for this. And he poured oil on his head, representing that he was going to be the next king. Do you know what Saul done? Saul was so embarrassed to be king, to be around people. He was nervous. He even went and hid. I said, shh, I'm back here. And the people had a look for him everywhere. Where's Saul? He's going to be the next king. And Saul really loved God. That's why God chose him to be king. He loved God. He was kind to people. He was a caring person. He put God first. He was going to be a good soldier. He was handsome. He was bright. People would love him. People would respect him. So whenever Saul met the prophet Samuel, Samuel said, Saul, you are the man. And he was very humbled by it. And that's what God likes. Not somebody full of self-importance or full of pride. No. He was humbled because to be a king was a very, very responsible thing to do before God. But you know something? That was about, he, he done well for about 10 years. Then he made a big mistake. Because every time he went to win the battle, Eli said, wait until we pray for God's blessing. And I, being the prophet, need to be the one to do that. But Saul became so impatient, he couldn't wait any longer. And he done what Eli was supposed to do. He done it himself. He tried to promote himself into be God's anointed person, and he wasn't. And so many people today, that try to promote themselves into being something they're never meant to be. And Eli told them off, what have you done? You've taken the place of God's anointed. You don't do that. And that's where everything started to go wrong for Saul. From then on, he started to get angry and frustrated on all these problems. And boys and girls, he was king for another, another 30 years. But the Bible says these frightening words, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. He, he started off so well for God. Then he made a mistake and he let the flesh, it's called the flesh, rule him instead. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And boys and girls, whenever you feel yourself going like that, you beg God, don't let me go like that, Lord, please. And he never got it back. And from then on, he was an angry, frustrated person all the time. Then Samuel, God said, Samuel, I need you to find another man. And if you go, you'll find a wee farmer, a wee shepherd boy. Nobody knows anything about him. If you walked up the street, they wouldn't even sell loads to him. He's called David. And this little boy is a man after God's own heart. 
And boys and girls, look at these lovely words in Acts we read about. I'll find David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do my will. Lovely thought. Even in Jeremiah, they talk about two men. Jeremiah does. He talks about, even if Moses and Samuel stood before me, Samuel loved to pray. He loved to do what was right, as did Moses. And he said, go now and find David. And there's Samuel, the prophet, a wonderful man of God, very wise man, made mistakes too, yes, like anyone. But he loved God with all his heart and God says, I need a new king. Saul's departed from me. I need somebody who loves me with all their hearts. And he goes to Jesse, a man with eight sons, and he finds all seven of them and he couldn't understand which one is the Lord. Any of these can be king, they all fit the criteria. No, God whispered Samuel, the Lord sees not as man saith. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And he said, Jesse, do you have any other sons? He said, yes, I have a wee son called David, but he, he's too young. He can never be king. And there was David, boys and girls, sitting playing his harp, praising God. What was he doing? He was looking after the sheep. The sheep are calm. The sheep are happy. He was praising God, writing, to, writing notes about God, which became the Psalms. And Jesse called him out, down the knee down. God says, you see that wee boy? He's in training to be the next king. Boys and girls, people just don't wake up as adults and say, and God says, you're the man. It often starts when you're young at primary school. God says, you're the man, you're the woman. Keep learning, keep preparing, keep following. I'm going to use you. Not when you're old. I'm going to start using you someday. And that could be today. And boys and girls, David proved himself. You see, later on, we all know David for being the champion who killed the Goliath publicly. The big giant. Yes, but quietly. David, to look after these wee lambs, he killed a bear and he killed a lion. And he probably didn't even tell him what about it. That's what God loved about him. He was humble. He wasn't a boastful person or full of pride. He done his job to protect the lambs. That was his job, to shepherd the little lambs, to look after them from the devil, from the bears and lions of this world. And he proved himself to be a king. Here's the problem. He saw the very jealous king. And whenever David would come to play the harp for him to calm him down, you know what he done? He tried to kill him. And then David, whenever he killed the giant, the giant Goliath, everything changed. He went for the big one. And whenever he killed the giant and took him straight down, all the enemy fled. You see, if there's any sin in your life, the big number one sin, whenever you kill it, boys and girls, all the wee ones will flee much quicker. Don't go for the wee ones. Go for the big sin that hinders your walk with God. And Goliath come tumbling down to the ground. And David took off his head with the giant's sword and said to the Saul, There's the king. And he was able to marry the king's daughter. His best friend was the king's son called Jonathan. And boys and girls, David realized the battle was the Lord's battle. It wasn't his battle. It was God's battle. And sometimes we can battle everything up inside us. No, it's a battle is the Lord's. Let the Lord fight your battles for you. See, Jonathan, he knew he was naturally going to be the king's son. Eli wanted to lift his sons up. Now, Samuel wanted to exalt his sons. Now, Saul wanted to exalt his son to be the kingship. But Jonathan knew David was going to be the man after God's own heart. It's natural to want your sons to, to be God's people. But it's not always God's way. If your sons are not right, that's what God was teaching him. Yes, but Jonathan was wise. He knew that God's plan was going to be David. And boys and girls, Jonathan, whenever they met together, they were best friends. And David realized he had a run for his life. And all through the book of 1 Samuel, you learn about David running away from the king because King Saul tried to kill him with a javelin. And the rest of the book in 1 Samuel talks about David on the run from the king. He would have died for the king. He would have fought for the king. He could have led the army for the king. But the king is so jealous and envious of David. David had a run for his life. And he loved Jonathan. And Jonathan said, David, I, will, I naturally will be the next king. But it's not for me. It's for you. Now, Jonathan is a lovely Christian example. Willing to step back. 
Those people would step on David's toes to get to be king. But Jonathan steps back and said, David, you're going to be the king. I pray it will all be well for you. What a wonderful example and testimony. And King Saul was so angry that he even invited David for dinner because he didn't come. He almost killed his own son. He was so possessed with anger was King Saul. David then had to run for his life. Read about him. And the Bible says over 600 men came to join David in the mountains. He lived for years in the mountains. He would get married in the mountains. Yes, living in the caves, the forest, on the run from King Saul, who sent over 10,000 soldiers just to find David. Yes. David said, Lord, why? Why is he doing this? And God was teaching David, David patience. And teaching him so many things in the caves, in the wilderness, when he was lonely. Teaching him, teaching him so many lessons. And then David and Jonathan, boys and girls, the king came to, to, get, to try and find David. And even twice, David could have killed the king. Once in a cave, and another time as he slept. But he didn't because David knew Saul was God's anointed king. But he would never do that to God's anointed king. He could have. But he knew it was wrong. It's never right to do wrong. And David says twice, Saul, what are you doing? I would do anything for you. I would die for you. Why are you trying to kill me? Because you're so jealous because I killed a giant. And they couldn't understand it. Boys and girls, David, then something happened. David, the Bible says David was so fearful living in Israel. He crossed over to the Philistines. And he lived in with the Philistines in a village called Ziglag. And there he had a village with his friends and his families and children. And a battle came between the Philistines and Israel. He signed up to fight for the Philistines. And while he was away talking to the king. But nobody trusted him. Saul was trying to kill him. His soldiers were against him. His family didn't want him. And now the king's soldiers didn't even trust him. Because he said he's going to turn on us. And while he was there it got worse. Because an enemy came and burned David's village, stole his wives, children, families, animals, everything. And now David's trusted men who loved him, now they were going to turn on David. And they were going to stone David to death. That's how lonely it went. David's a lovely picture of the Lord Jesus when everybody turned against David. That's like the New Testament. The Bible says that all the religious leaders turned against Jesus. The, all the people shouted, away with him, crucify him. We don't want him anymore. And even whenever they arrested him in the garden, every one of his close disciples, they all ran. Even Judas. Remember Judas? 30 pieces of silver sold the Lord Jesus. And no disciples stood with him. That's like David. But David was very wise and he prayed, God lead me. And he said to the man, I will find him. I will get your wives back. And he followed the trail. He used his warrior instinct and he followed it, the trail. And there he came across it. And he killed all the enemy and rescued his wives, children and all the animals. Everything they took. But Saul, to finish off, he was so angry and so possessed in his mind. He, God and Spirit of God and left him. He had stopped communing with God. And the Bible says he was so desperate he wanted to talk to a witch. And he, he put on plain clothes. This was forbidden. And he put on plain clothes and he walked into the streets and through the streets of Jerusalem. And he kept walking and walking and walking until he found a witch called the Witch of Endor. And boys and girls, you know what he said? He said to the witch, bring me Samuel. The witch didn't know it was the king. He said, Samuel, the prophet. I want to know what, tell him, tell me what am I supposed to do about wit's end? And God was able to overrule this evil. Witches are an evil, evil thing. Wizards and witches and anything to do with Halloween, anything like that. There's always evil behind it. And a satanic with demons and all of those things. But boys and girls, God overruled. And you know what he caused to happen? Not only did he hear a word from Samuel, he caused Samuel to come to life and to speak. And so even the witch was terrified and so froze in the ground. His legs became so weak he couldn't stand. Never mind run. And Samuel said, I told you. I told you the spirit of God has departed from you. Because you, you, took, you tried to take the place of God's anointed. 
on boys and girls because he disobeyed God. Samuel said, Saul, God is finished with you. He's going to get a new king. You're going to go to the battle and you're going to die in the battle as are your three sons. And then Samuel disappeared. Saul went back home, boys and girls. Within a short time, a battle broke out. And Saul went into the battle with his army and the, the enemy hit him with the arrows. And on, on that same day, the enemy won. His three sons died in the battle, including Jonathan. And the enemy wounded Saul. And he said to his, his, his sword bearer, who had carried his weapons, just kill me because I'm going to die. And I don't want to be taken and to be tortured. And his, his armor bearer wouldn't do it. And so the Bible says Saul got his own sword and he fell upon his own sword. And he died that day. He committed suicide. And whatever his, his armor bearer done that, he, he done the same thing. Because his king was now dead. The Bible says someone, a man came and brought, told David the news. King Saul's dead. Your best friend Jonathan is dead also. Was David happy? Was he rejoicing? No. The Bible says David wept and he cried and he cried and he cried. And he was a very sad man. He said, Lord, why did that happen? I would have done anything for King Saul. I loved him with all my heart. I would have fought for him. I married his daughter, the princess. And because of his anger and his jealousy, I couldn't get near him to help him. And now he's dead. And boys and girls, we've come to the end of 1 Samuel. It finishes with the death of Saul. But now David's turn. This man, after God's own heart. The little boy who fed the sheep and killed the lion and the bear and the giant. He's going to become one of the greatest kings Israel has ever known. That's in the next book of Samuel and into the book of Kings. And that's it for today. Lovely story. Let's just finish with a wee song um, about the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. to pray very much for us we're now doing six online programs every week today sunday and then every day monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday if you do watch it give us a thumb up if you don't say to your teachers there's an assembly on youtube every day from nine o'clock onwards and ask your teacher if you can watch it or you can watch it whenever you come home as well and don't forget friday night lots of action songs and it's all going to happen this friday every week from now on Pray for us as we seek to bring and teach the Bible the precious word of God. Joanna as she videos, me as we do the story, and of course Ken as he edits and puts it all together. Teamwork makes the dream work. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your goodness, for your love, for all the boys and girls again Sunday. And Father, help us to be like David, to love you with all our hearts. And even though, Lord, there's struggles and temptations and problems, all these things help us to keep running for you. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. See you.